Hey, gang, Sean from The Good Dog. How we doing? <laughs> Chilly Willy out here. Okay, a little TGD tip. Everybody always asks about the muzzle process, protocols, programs, how the heck we do it. So, any dog that comes in to TGD that has history of, stuck there, history uh, of any kind of, um, any, well, like, any bite stuff on humans, automatic muzzle stuff. Any bite stuff on dogs, automatic muzzle stuff. Any like pretty sketchy behavior around either one of them, most likely muzzle stuff as well. Okay, so what do I mean by muzzle stuff? That means muzzle conditioning. That means that the dogs that come in have to be pre-muzzle conditioned before they ever arrive. That means that these dogs have to be very comfortable in a muzzle and the conditioning is done by their owner and there's a whole process and we've got videos there or a video that we send out to them and then they go through it and usually it takes a couple weeks to get it really like solid um and then so when the dogs come in they're already uh conditioned to the muzzle so they're comfortable in the muzzle if the owners have done their work and the cool thing is the muzzles we use are baskerville ultras now baskerville ultras compared to some muzzles which might give the handler a little bit more protection. The Baskerville muzzles, like if you stuck your fingers in, you could get them chomped off, or chomped on at least. Um, but the cool thing about the Baskervilles is that dogs can pant very easily, they can drink, and they can eat through the muzzles. So, not through them, like getting through them, but they can do all the activities they need to do. So, this question comes up all the time, like how do we deal with these dogs that come in that are aggressive? and how do we move through this process so when they come in they're on the muzzle you guys have seen the videos dogs are dropped off they stay on the muzzle typically a day two days usually that's kind of like the protocol sometimes three days at the at the top but like usually it's a day to two day to two day to two days uh, Sounds like I'm creating my own language. Anyways, and, and the, the whole thing that goes on is that basically it takes a little bit of time for the dog to develop a sense of trust and start to be less stressed and kind of adjust itself and acclimate itself. And once they get to that point, if the muzzle conditioning has been done right and we've done our early protocols of like conditioning the dog to the environment and to being handled with us in a certain way, then they're usually pretty amenable to getting the muzzle on and off. Now there are exceptions and there are dogs that are highly, highly dangerous and that involves like more tightrope walking and, and, and far more caution, um, things like that, dogs with major bite histories and things like that. But that's our typical protocol um, for the majority of dogs and, and I know we just get so many questions about how the heck do we do this and the thing is if we didn't have the dogs pre-muzzle conditioned and if we didn't set a firm tone when dogs come in so dogs got into a space of being like okay I have to inhibit some of these poor choices um, biting's not an option things like that you guys know if you follow us that one of our beliefs one of our um, one of our approaches is that we don't come from the approach of like, let's build trust through being like soft and easy going about things with dogs. Let's build trust if a dog is being aggressive or nasty or in a like highly aroused state, we really shut that down. And so that always in our, in our belief creates a gateway to a dog stopping typical cycles or patterns of behavior, stopping it, reevaluating and then going okay I've got to make some different decisions and that creates the gateway or the doorway for the dog to start to move through there and into a different space where they're like okay usually I do this but now I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna think about it um, I'm still uncomfortable but I'm gonna think about it and the dog goes through the processing and adjusting and acclimating to new behavior and that's where we start to move them through into different stuff and that's where we build trust so we start with respect and then we build trust on the back end of that. So the, the combination of muzzle conditioning before the dog comes in, then our whole protocol for how we kind of initiate or introduce dogs to our, to our program here, making sure we set a firm tone for any dogs that, that mean harm or like out of their trees and need to like calm down, relax, don't bite, that whole thing. 
and go through that. And the combination of those two uh, kind of approaches typically leaves us in a spot where within a day or two, we can take a muzzle off and then we can put a muzzle back on. And so what that means is that we can take, uh, we can take a dog out of a crate without a muzzle we can, the dogs all have long lines on, so we have control. We don't just like let them out and like rodeo it up. All the dogs, like it's complicated. There's protocols in place. We've been doing this, so we know how to keep ourselves safe and how to make things work. But all the dogs have long lines on, connected to martingales, take them out of the, out of the crate. They're under control the whole time. Then everything goes right and we've done our job right and the owners have done their jobs right and they're not like those one percenter dogs we can get a muzzle on there back on the dog in order to gear the dog up or in order to work the dog until the dog is in a comfortable space to even like work some of the stuff like obedience work and initial stuff might be too much pressure or if the dog redirects on walks they might have a muzzle on for that kind of work and then we take the muzzle back off when we put the dog back in the crate. And so that's kind of the, if, if everybody thinks maybe there's like some secret, you know, magic approach to it. It's really not, it's just a very practical approach. And the practical approach is the dogs have to be prepared before they come in so they're comfortable wearing it, so they can wear it for a day or two if they need to. Obviously, they can get all their basic needs met through water and food and things like that, and panting and breathing. Um, but we can stay safe for those initial handling phases when we need to take dogs out for potties and walks and things like that. We can't, we, you can't, at least we can't, take muzzles off of highly dangerous dogs, dogs that don't have any context or relationship or any kind of like anything built with us um, and that are highly stressed and like, like, okay, now we're gonna put a muzzle on them. That's just how you would get hurt. So we don't do that and you've seen the dogs come through here over and over again. That's basically the process. The process is they come in, they're on muzzle, we get them into a good space mentally, get them to start inhibiting some of their bad choices. We get the muzzle off as soon as we can, and then all goes well, fingers crossed, we're able to put the muzzle back on when we need to, to work them, gear them up, put collars on, things that can cause dogs more stress or get them worried, things like that. And that's basically it. So I'm hoping that this kind of clarifies for everybody how that stuff works, how, how the muzzle magic works, how we uh, put it all together, how we keep ourselves safe, and then how we move the dogs through the process. Obviously the, the premium choice is to get the muzzle off as soon as we possibly can for the dog, but in the dog's interest in our, and in our interest, we have to make sure that everybody's safe. And so like the dog really determines how that works, but typically a day or two and we're in a good spot where we can start to move through that. So hopefully that helps guys. Any questions, hit me up in the comments. I'll see if I can clarify. Um, and that's it. Hope you guys are good. The great muzzle quandary hopefully has been answered and um, hopefully that helps you guys that are trainers, uh, trainers in training or owners that are kind of like just curious or wanting to work on this or needing to work on this. All right, talk to you guys soon. Take care. Have an awesome Wednesday. See ya.